Our ludicrous space game is getting a massive update with 3.23 on the probably distant horizon and I have no epic space adventure footage to make a normal voidy vid, so let's talk about it. We're going to look at these exciting upcoming features through the lens of gameplay motivation to see just how much our experiences might change and how much of an impact they will have on our moment to moment gameplay throughout Star Citizen. But Void Dude, it's an alpha. The motivation should be to test the shut the fuck up, stupid but handsome viewer. After 300 years of development, I'm treating this fucking game as a fucking game and no one can stop me. The Star Map Rework. Wait, that's coming in the next patch? Holy sh. I've always maintained that the current broken ass, dysfunctional, frustrating, early 2000s looking, annoying, illegible, clunky, slow, janky, inefficient, awkward to use Star Map is one of the greatest barriers to entry for players of our ludicrous space game. Anything that improves on this is an actual godsend. Moby Glass Rework Many epic space adventures begin by opening a 2954 version of a smartphone, just like in real life. As with the star map, any improvements here would be graciously appreciated by star citizens everywhere, but it would be nice to one day use our ship's supercomputer to seamlessly chart a course through space and time instead of a science fiction iPhone. FPS Map System Maps are cool, who doesn't like a good map? I believe this change comes with the FPS compass alongside the HUD visor UI, which is great because I sometimes need to return to the heading of a ship that I've stashed a few dozen kilometers away after getting f***ed up on maze at jump down. Personal and instanced hangars the idea of customizing and organizing our own instant safe space in the form of a hangar conjures the idea of something like the Hearthfire update to Skyrim where we'll be physically placing interactable objects to turn our hangars into places that actually feel lived in. We'll be managing our cargo, inventory and vehicles, but I'm not sure how this will actually work and how it will feel once it's in the game. Does this imply that our magic local inventories will be a thing of the past? If so, that's great. I like the idea of managing what's ours by physically storing it in containers instead of the magic local inventories, and this will bring an extra bit of meaningful decision making in our preparations for going on epic space adventures. However, your personal hangar is going to be found at your home location, and the first thing anyone does in star citizen is escape the planet they begin on to get set up at a space station for much easier and faster access to the rest of the system. So unless we can set station hangars as a starting location or at least get a persistent hangar at a non-planet side landing zone, I do not see this impacting our day-to-day -day gameplay much unless we get real reasons to return and use them. Freight Elevators while the ability to load vehicles without having to visit a landing pad at the next moon over is going to be pretty cool, the only cargo loading and unloading I'm familiar with is moving whatever was in your cargo hold to our cargo hold. What does this change actually mean when you perform the holy ritual of selling totally legally procured goods? Will we be tractoring hundreds of SEUs onto a platform at Brio's breaker yard to get a paycheck or will the cargo still magically disappear when we hit the sell button? If selling will be the same as buying, this could make the no questions asked terminals littered throughout Stanton an insane hotbed of action throughout the 3.23 patch lifecycle, and I couldn't be more space hyped if this is the case. Simply selling cargo could take a lot longer than it ever has before and should encourage traders, pirates and smugglers to have air support when offloading their hard earned gains. This might even provide an actual use case to have ground vehicles at sell locations to further protect the logistical gameplay nightmare we're about to embark on. However, it raises the question of pad ramming and armistice zones as players will get harassed while they are at their most vulnerable. What features are in place to make this at least feel somewhat balanced? Who the fuck knows? Only time will tell, I guess. Item bank and unique item recovery. Yeah. This further supports the narrative that we'll have less or zero access to magic local inventories, which is great. I don't have any subscriber flair or account bound items that I'm married to, but at the most this means players will be less prone to leaving their gold plated armor they acquired as a form of overcompensation in deep storage, never to see the light of day, so looting the victims of collateral damage throughout our epic space adventures might be a tad more interesting from a cosmetic standpoint. I'm not a game designer, but I do feel this feature should at least tie into insurance and incur some kind of cost to get it retrieved once lost. More meaningful money sinks in game means more reason to make money playing the game which means more gameplay motivation. Cargo hauling missions 
We've been experiencing epic cargo logistical gameplay since commodities became physical SCU boxes. Now it's time for the traders to experience the same high octane tractor beam gameplay. The feature card for these new missions does state that it uses the freight elevators we've mentioned before, and it's unclear if this means that freight elevators are only going to be used for these missions or not. I'm sure Jared will let us know soon, or some handsome viewer who watched the recent SEL eight times will let me know how dumb I am in the comments below below. Speaking of dumb, don't be with today's sponsor NordVPN. If you do shady stuff for even totally normal stuff on the internet, it would be pretty dumb to not have an extra layer of protection for your private information. No one wants their private information exposed. That would be terrible. I'm pretty sure little Voidy Jr. wasn't using NordVPN and that's why he got hacked and exposed for paying his school fees with funds from an illicit product fake space money laundering ring, got kicked out of the Lawful Space Education program and ended up living in a trash heap on Daymar. <laughs> If only he considered the NordVPN two-year plan that comes with 67% off as well as three months free for a friend. Think about your future. Use the NordVPN Voidivid's code below in the description and browse the internet anonymously and safely. Dynamic Crosshair cutting-edge next-gen science fiction game designed to run on 2026 hardware gets features seen in FPS games since 1980's Battlezone. EVA Tier 2 Anything that improves the user experience when executing a tactical boarding maneuver upon a dangerous and hostile ship that contains cargo worth hauling is a good thing in my ethically questionable book. I just wonder that if you casually saw a trailer of Star Citizen with a zero-g combat scene in it and everyone's in this awkward prone Iron Man flight pose with guns drawn, you might think to yourself, What the f The loot screen from Apex Legends. Efficient and more user-friendly looting, Epic Space Game Win. New Character Customizer Making your character look cool is cool. Visor and Lens HUD Rework UI improvements are good, reduce clutter, make things intuitive and easily understandable means more happy star citizens, which means more loot pinatas. Distribution Centers Generally speaking, gamers are basically water. We follow the path of least resistance when it comes to doing stuff or achieving stuff in our favorite games. For example, as of patch 3.22, if your goal is to make a UEC, you are not going to grind bunkers for credits when you could be pulling in millions per minute with your $400 Aegis Reclaimer and the Overtune salvaging mechanics. I'm not saying every single person who plays Star Citizen in its current state is min-maxing the absolute shit out of the game, but it's undeniable that many do. Entire areas Areas that could be exciting and full of space adventure, even in the current state of the game, become obsolete and turn into ghost towns because some other aspect of the game is far more superior at generating in-game wealth, as meaningless as that in-game wealth may be at the moment. Locations that should encourage player interactions like Jumptown or SPK become absolute ghost towns because construction materials or ERTs or whatever the flavor of the month is drastically outperforms every other way to make fake space money. When was the last time you checked out Wake of Disaster. It would be nice if this doesn't happen to distribution centers. This is a first year implementation of the facilities and I understand there's much more to come, but it would be pretty cool if there was some meaningful gameplay to enjoy at these interesting locations when we get them in game that somehow encourages player interaction and the rewards for participating in related missions gets balanced alongside everything else we get to do in Star Citizen and doesn't make anything else obsolete at the same time. Dynamic Events Blockade Runner more events are great, especially if they aren't too linear. In my humble and honest opinion, events like Siege of Orison and Xenothreat are pretty incredible, but run the risk of getting stale after the first few times you partake in them. I also wonder how these events will work in a future fully server meshed version of Star Citizen. As for this event in particular, as long as we can choose to get involved lawfully or criminally, it should be a good time, so long as the rewards for participating outshine the rewards outside of the event for the duration that it runs. Otherwise, there's zero gameplay motivation and no one will participate in the event after the first or second time they experience it. Reputation Hostility
I hope to see this feature evolve into the deep and meaningful reputation system we all want to desperately see in Star Citizen that will at least make even the most murderous of murder hobos consider their actions with a bit of thought. Check out my Dark Forest video, link in the description for more thoughts on these types of game features and systems. How this will impact our current experience however, I do not think by much, at least not until enemy ship AI stops acting like the target dummies that they are and can actually pose a threat to the average player. Pussy pie. We can now press F to pay our respects to the inner thought system. The inner thought system is dead. Long live the F system. Masters of the universe modes. Anyone who watches my content should be able to tell that I'm not the sweatiest pro elite PvP dogfighter boy by a long shot and if this change makes more ships more viable and we get to see more larger crewed vessels with turrets actually being competitive in various scenarios then at the minimum master modes could at least make a slight dent in the reign of the light fighter meta we've all endured for the last 10 years. Then the future of our ludicrous space game is brighter than little voidy juniors. Thank you channel patreons and channel members for all your support, your incredible generosity continues to blow me away. Thinking of pledging to this ludicrous space game then use one of the referral codes on screen now for a free 5000 starting credits. If you enjoy my content and are interested in supporting the channel beyond a like and a subscribe check the links in the description, consider the join button below and follow me on twitch at twitch.tv slash voidude. Your continued support genuinely helps me to continue producing these videos. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you around the verse, cheers.